Well, I've got great news guys. Creality is releasing a massive update, a firmware update for the K2 Plus and the Creality High Machine. In this video, we're gonna run down what those features are and we're gonna talk about real quick some of the fixes that they're pushing out. And although they haven't pushed it out on the cloud to all the machines, I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can get this firmware and install it on your machine today. So let's get to the video. Okay, we're gonna start with the K2 Plus and it's literally two pages of updates on this new firmware. Now, the current firmware out 1.1.2.10, right? So the new one will be 1.1.3.2. So on your machine right now, if you're up to date, you should be on the 1.1.2.10. Jesus, that's a mouthful. So I'm gonna cover some of these. I'm not gonna talk in detail about every single one, but I will grab a few that kind of stand out to me and we'll go over those just a little bit. But mainly I just wanna tell you about the features. I'm gonna supply the firmware for you if you wanna throw it on a USB stick, stick it in your printer and upload it and have it before they push it out on the cloud. So the first topic is gonna be system stability and security improvements, right? And underneath that, uh, they've got some fixes for optimized background logic and hidden functions for smoother operation. Fixed missing detection for platform board issues, reducing hardware related failures. Adjusted maintenance alerts. Cannot clear alerts during non idle time for enhanced safety. Not sure what that's about. Upgraded Wi Fi security policy SSID. Uh, the max is 32 characters. I believe they're lengthening that. So if you have some crazy Wi-Fi name, you'll be able to do that. Enable waste tray detection by default for better usability. So now the waste tray detection will automatically be enabled and you'll have to disable that if you don't want it. So that's it for stability and security. So now let's move on to error feedback upgrades. So this is going to have a lot to do with these random errors on the K2. Now, I love my K2s and my K2s print perfectly and I mean, they always have. Now, I do get these random errors sometimes and to me, I've told Creality that to me, they're more like a notification. It's not asking you really to do anything. It's basically just saying, hey, I had this error and a lot of people don't know what to do with that and they just, you know, they're like, oh my God, what do I do? Well, nine out of 10 of those situations on my machine, I just hit okay and hit resume and print and it's fine. So hopefully, this will address some of those where the, it's just a like a, a random error and there's really nothing you need to do. So on error feedbacks, they have updated error titles 2781, 2830 with access parameters for pre precise troubleshooting. Uh, added maintenance URLs to all error messages for faster resolution. Fixed key 2847 pause failure after power loss. So if you had a power loss, you got the error message 2847, this should address that. Network optimization. So improved error prompts, no more generic connection failed. So if you were getting connection failed, prompts with your network then this firmware should fix that enhanced weak network stability so that should be fixed uh wi-fi connection fails with long names uh they covered that earlier it's relisted incorrect wi-fi name display when selecting from saved networks so that's good uh file management and read process added local file scan progress display so that's good now you'll have a progress status bar for those files uh now it's going to do a storage check during file copy to prevent failures so that's good a account and cloud service fixes uh fix missing thumbnail display for creality cloud uploads uh reserved no data avatar glitch after logout resolve no data avatar glitch after lockout uh qr code refresh issues during region switching so i've had issues with that qr code before so maybe this will fix that uh auto logout after device deletion in setup flow uh print task and material management now this is where it gets good to me print recovery so fixed resume failures and empty extrusion after power loss so it sounds like there's going to be less of a chance for you to lose your print after a power loss uh improve multicolor print recovery uh purge before repositioning adjusted nozzle height on first layer resume uh material handling rfid tags show question mark if unreadable so I guess now I've had that before it prompts you to pick a filament it has a question mark so sounds like that's fixed so that's cool uh, auto updated CFS file mappings for real-time sync now that's awesome because I was having issues with my CFS keeping up to date with my slicer while I'm sitting there working on a model you know when I first load the slicer I would have to like go click stuff and 
it was just always never just in like truly in sync and sometimes I'd, I'd wait until i go to send the print to the printer and then it kind of updates but i you know i want to see it inside the slicer and i want my model to be showing in the filament that i plan on printing and not changing later you know you need that like that before you slice really so startup and hardware compatibility uh faster boot fixed mcu version read errors temporarily disabled wi-fi model check so it sounds like for a faster boot, they're gonna temporarily disable Wi-Fi modules when they're not needed, maybe. I don't know. Total print time now displays in hours. Auto updates Wi-Fi list when you're idle. Supports printing with unknown external spools. So that's awesome. So fixed object exclusion errors during multi-object prints. 3MF files now show total time and material usage. Next is fixed print startup failures, resolved waste tray blockage detection issues, and fixed external spool error 0528 during power loss recovery. And then last but not least for the K2 Plus, fixed filament tangle retry loop causing crashes. So some of those were pretty significant. A lot of them are stuff that you probably won't care about. As a whole, that's a pretty big firmware update and they're covering a lot of ground with that one. So that's good. Now let's go on to the Creality High. I'll cover that one. It's not quite as extensive as the k2 plus but it's still a page and a half of stuff oh and real quick guys i wanted to let you know i'm going live with zora and kevin on creality's channel on april the 22nd and i'm giving away a free printer so you're not going to want to miss that live it's april the 22nd at 8 30 p.m central standard time i might be giving away some filament i'm pretty sure zora and them will be giving away something if it's not just filament they uh, lord knows what they'll be giving away they always give away stuff so Join us on the live on Creality's Facebook, YouTube, uh, I believe they're on Twitch. I mean, they're everywhere, so you'll want to go to their channel. I'll be with them on their channel, not on this channel. And just keep in mind, if you want to stay up to date on things like this and you don't want to have to worry about catching it on YouTube or whatever, you can always join our Patreon. It's free to join. Now, we do have paid members. If you need printer support or if you want exclusive STL files, stuff like that, behind the scenes access. but. You can join for free and we'll automatically notify you anytime that we're doing a giveaway or you know special events stuff like that you will get a notification on patreon way before we announce it on youtube so that's the benefit of joining the patreon so let's get back to the video so if you're on the high the new firmware is going to be 1.1.0.45 and the highlight of the firmware is key improvements and bug fixes servo motor firmware update now first on the list is fixed sporadic error 2001 issues. I'm not sure what the 2001 issue is. I haven't had it on my Creality High. Matter of fact, I've never had one single issue on my high, so I couldn't tell you what that code is, but if you've had it, then it sounds like they're gonna fix it. Uh, enhanced homing safety. Resolved rare platform scraping during homing. So that's huge. If if people were having issues with the tool head colliding with the bed during homing, uh, yeah, that that's definitely a huge one right there. Uh, print layer display fix, corrected and accurate layer count reporting, uh, multicolor printing optimization. It doesn't say what all that entails, but whatever it is, it's got to be good if it's optimizing the multicolor, right? Fixed color mixing issues, added floating point support for color transition links. Let's see, next is error handling update, fixed failure to pause prints after error 2847. Creality Cloud sync fix. So if you've had issues with your printer syncing with Creality Cloud, then it sounds like this one is gonna help you out. Addressed incorrect print status displays during cloud printing and manual filament feed recovery. Now they've also resolved the unresponsive pause function after a filament load error. Now that's a good one because you and I both know when you need to stop or pause your print, you need to stop or pause it. Next is model skip function repair. Now last but not least, they fixed the non-functional skip object feature so if you ever tried to skip an object or to exclude an object on the touch screen and you just couldn't get it to work then it sounds like this is going to be the fix for you so that's the two new updates i wanted to get this out to you guys as soon as i found out about it and hopefully some of these updates will help some of you guys get your machines back in line if they ever were now mine's always been great i've had a few random issues here and there but honestly i can't complain fingers crossed <laughs> Well, that's all I've got for you guys on this video. Make sure you're subscribed, turn on notifications, and stay ready to 3D print. We'll see you next time.